Welcome to another episode from the Ed Ed. Today I'd like to talk about my digital readout system, DRO, for my humble mill drill machine here. I've owned this mill drill for at least a couple decades and it's an okay machine other than the collars. You can't zero the collars and so it's very frustrating. You, you, um, you look at these numbers on the collar and try and remember the numbers and make the you know the number of cranks and so forth and you miss counts and so forth so it's very frustrating if you're familiar with uh, machining and so what I've always wanted is a digital readout system for my milling machine here and an early attempt in the uh, 90s was a uh, open source program uh, using some uh, encoders that would have been for like a servo motor and so forth and it was an open source program, and the program itself worked pretty good. It, uh, the, the problem at the time was the computers were a bit slow, so you had to turn the crank slow. And in my instance, I kind of lowballed the design of the mach of the uh, interface, and so it never really quite worked. And then I then got uh, some surplus industrial equipment, which didn't have quite all the bits and pieces, and was kind of big, and I never really got too far on that. And then the last few years, it's been like I've been seeing these quite inexpensive digital readout kits on like Amazon and so forth and so I thought what the heck I'll buy this for $200 because you know I, I'd like to do machining projects but every single time it was like oh, do I really want to machine anything on this guy the collars it's just the it's very frustrating to use these uh, collars you can't zero and they're hard to read especially as you get older and so forth and I have some lighter you know machine tools here like a little uh, little light duty CNC and some homemade mills but so I can kind of been able to get around it at times along with 3d printing but there's times where I really need a bigger chunk of metal and admittedly this isn't the heaviest mill in the world but it's what I own and it works um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying this particular model mill drill though I think they still make them or something very similar to this but if you happen to have one or if you, it's only you can afford and you want a DRO system you might want to check out my uh, uh, Thingiverse uh, okay, um, site. I have posted the uh, models for the uh, the parts, the STLs, and the FreeCAD models of, of the all the whole setup and the uh, a kind of a rough draft of the milling machine itself is to kind of model those all in. The kit itself originally came with um, some brackets, but the brackets were too big. They were kind of generic. Really didn't fit the mill and uh, no instructions to how to use them anyways. It did come with a manual for the controller but it didn't come with any sort of like suggestions or anything like that. And I just figured for really not a lot of trouble and maybe better results it would just be easier to model and 3D print my own parts especially being that there's odd curves and angles on this thing and obviously it was never meant for any sort of retrofitting. So I think overall it came out pretty good, pretty happy with it makes life so much funner. I've done a number of projects with this so far and it, it's, it really does make you want to actually do stuff on it now rather than kind of dreading it with the collars. And uh, the 3D prints themselves are still the rough draft I usually use. It's 20% infill with just a few skins. And the rigidity and repeatability is actually pretty good. Um, so, but I still might go back and 3D print some final versions that will be like um, you know, higher infill and thicker skins, but I think overall it came out pretty good. So if you're interested, check out my video here. I'll go into how I've done this and the setup and so forth and, uh, or, and, or at least maybe it'll give you some inspirations on your project. And I enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy this project too. So the first thing is the X axis. You got this really long encoder strip here. Basically there's probably some sort of encoding um, pattern that's inside this strip here. I don't know if it's a piece of glass with a, like an optical fringe interference pattern. I think the industrial ones tend to do that. It might be magnetic. It might be just a series of slots. I'm not really sure what's actually in the guy. And in this case I have the sensor itself, the sensor head, that goes up inside the slot here that has a little rubber um, light seal. That's stationary and it has a couple adjustment slots for the bracket that then mounts to another bracket then adjusts for the other axis that then mounts to the carriage. Uh, um, actually it's a saddle. This is the saddle of the, of the system. And that's about as simple as, f as you can get. There's a, a couple of spacers I put in here. It's just 
I guess I haven't modeled those. There's just some scraps and parts I had. Screws to the existing slot that happens to be in the uh, table here. Hopefully yours might have something like that. And it doesn't get much more simple than that. Okay, so now we have the uh, y-axis. It's kind of the same sort of story. The I guess in this case, I, I've done it the opposite direction. The encoder itself is now moving, and it's the, um, um, the pattern, encoding pattern, uh, that's um, stationary. The um, Whatever it is in there, like I say, it's in there. It's either a, uh, some sort of optical interference, or it's a strip with a bunch of slots, or black and white lines. I'm not really sure how they're doing that. Could be magnetic, but uh, in this case, the the uh, encoder sensor itself moves and the encoder strip is stationary. Um, 3D printed plastic parts that have a little index feature for mounting it to the base plate of this machine. Obviously I have to drill holes in the uh, base plate and various other points in order to make this adaptation work, but luckily it's cast iron and it uh, drills really well and taps really nicely, so that's one thing that's kind of nice about cast iron and fairly long screws holding it all together and I guess that could you couldn't really get much more straightforward this straightforward than this is very much uh, simple design it's the same 3d printed part and then there's a, a part with a couple different uh, kind of adapters that translates from one direction to the other there's a translation feature here and here and they're gonna give you a different view to be able to see that okay so here's a uh, some of those translation features I was mentioning before. It's just a, a, a couple holes drilled in the uh, saddle that the tent translates down. It's kind of hard to see in there. It's a bit tight. Maybe I can show you the other side, but I don't think it will give you any greater clarity. Yeah, it's really hard to see in there. It's uh, kind of tough, but you can see the other side of the saddle. Got some screws here and so forth. Maybe in the CAD model I can show that to you better, but uh, there they are anyways. Okay, the z-axis, so I have a, a couple adapter uh, brackets here that mount to the front and once again it's the encoder strip is stationary and the sensor um, carriage moves with it and here I'm using what is basically the original uh, depth control uh, screw for um, mounting the, the carriage Okay, so here you, you can see once again that the sensor element is what moves up and down. The uh, encoder uh, strip is stationary. And I guess the one minor hassle I had here was when I was catting this, I didn't account for the lock nut being able to clear this uh, sensing element here when it gets down here. So I had to extend this out with just a big nut I happened to have laying around. I lost a few threads, but it seems to lock just fine. Um, it gets a bit crowded in here, and I guess I could redesign that a little bit, but I think overall it works pretty good, and it's easier to get at this guy now, too, if anything. So I think that's the only minor thing, is you might find that you might have to unscrew your little lock lever, if it's anything like the one I have, and extend it out with like a big old nut that'll fit over that uh, screw to space it out about another half inch, and then it clears this uh, little sensor adapter just fine. Okay, so then the DRO itself, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I, I guess I don't really need to do too much of a tutorial on, on the actual operation of the DRO itself. It's uh, there's, They do have a manual and it works just fine. There's a lot of controls and features I guess I don't really need to go into. But it's a nice straightforward little guy and it works very nicely and I'm pretty happy with it. It has a whole bunch of functions I've yet to even really look into. Okay, so then the uh, the kit itself, you know, it, it comes with a nice manual on actually using the DRO itself, but that's all you get in the way of a document. There's no other document at all. So what came in the box here is a bunch of brackets. Uh, that was one of my 3D printed parts. Uh, brackets, some nice little covers that kind of will, I guess, help cover the, uh, the slides a little bit better. Um, some fasteners and some little plastic end covers, uh, but nothing in the way of um, any sort of suggestions of how to use these guys and this is all I had so there isn't really quite enough there I mean if you were to do two and two you would have that and then you'd have one extra so you know I don't know exactly what their plans were maybe slot them 
you know that away I, I don't know I don't know it was they're big they're big things and my mill is actually pretty small and um, yeah not very useful little covers uh, I maybe could have taken advantage of little plastic things are very nice I guess I got a lot of extra metric fasteners which for me is always hard to come by being I'm in the English SAE Imperial world still here and uh, I guess next thing is to show you the history of what I was trying to do previously. So here's one of the almost could have worked out projects uh, for DROs. I've had these kicking around for a few decades, uh, got them out of a scrapyard. One works, one doesn't. I think this is the one that doesn't because it says only about a half wave ridge rectifier is out. So I guess I looked inside this one at some point. I did have, I believe, the encoder elements themselves. I think they're just a like a strip of metal with some sort of optical coating on it that produces an interference pattern when you shine light on it and then it's just a, a photo sensor that uh, you know measures the highs and lows of that uh, uh, optical um, interference fringe pattern and then you know kind of as a demo here I got uh, some optical strip that's from actually a linear uh, system uh, it's, it's nothing related to this guy and I have a, an IR transmitter receiver here and you can basically you, you sense uh, distances via the transition of light dark light dark of the uh, light sensor uh, passing through this uh, little strip that has very fine little strip of uh, slots in it. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. Probably won't. So anyways, that was a project that didn't of course pan out as usual because it's not all the bits and pieces are around. Nothing's quite working right and it's really huge and it's a small shop so glad for $200 I got my problem solved. And then for you folks, just a, a kind of a down memory lane for me, I had done uh, quite a few decades ago uh, a, a little DOS program. It was an open source program that uh, you might be able to find still out on the internet, some uh, old DOS archive site. If you really want to uh, try and do, roll your own system, it was um, produced by uh, some fellow here, and he was kind enough to actually give it away. Uh, Lindsay Engraving Company, it looks like. and. Uh, it's just called a digital readout system. Maybe you can get all that out of there. I don't know if that means anything anymore, but uh, to anybody, but you might want to research that. It was a, a you know a nice little program, and it was back in the day when I had like a 486 DX25 or something like that, and you used the parallel port to uh, run your pins, uh, data pins in. And what I had was some old servo motors with uh, these nice little encoders on the back. And, and most people, what they would do is they would use a cable and you would spool the cable across to some sort of a wheel here and you could move this guy across based on uh, the tensioning and the rotation of the uh, encoder. In my case, um, these encoders don't come off the motors very easily and the motors are free so I had to have, to have a bunch of those. And so it was a system that almost worked but unfortunately I went the most minimalist route and I tried friction driving mine and this little piece of bicycle inner tube liner uh, on this uh, piece of channel aluminum and it didn't you know didn't pan out as you might imagine it slipped a little too much and uh, you'd lose you lose um, data each time as you moved around and so forth so it was an almost work also you know that it was a you know a really early uh, DOS you know, computer that was just a little bit too slow I could have really sprung the money for a newer computer in the day but uh, be cheapskate here it was a used computer it was already maybe a bit slow on its day so you'd have to turn the cranks really slow otherwise the computer would miss steps but like I say if you were inclined to try and roll your own and wanted to go down DOS memory lane it might be worth giving it a try look that up I'm not going to bother with it myself but uh, like I said for $200 my problem solved and I'm pretty happy with it okay so the um, encoder slides when you uh, first get them out of the box you'll notice that there's kind of a red uh, shim uh, plastic part that separates the sensor carriage from the um, encoder slide as it were the the, the big long stationary rectangular tube with whatever the uh, sensing um, gradient feature is and the idea behind this plastic little red plastic part is to act as a uh, kind of a suggestion shim as it were to make certain that when you tighten everything down 
everything kind of stays at about that gap in position as far as parallelism, squareness, and, and gap. And so uh, what I found is moving my slides back and forth, back and forth, and then slowly snugging everything down and kind of tugging and pulling on everything and kind of pulling on this little plastic uh, red shim to make certain it can freely move in the gap between the, uh, the stationary and the sliding uh, carriage and just make certain that nothing's binding and, and getting stressed out. And so it's kind of a slow, methodical, little careful probing process of tightening, moving things around, making certain things aren't getting too tight. And at the end, you can just slide that little red slider out and you can move your carriage back and forth and it should be that your uh, encoder and your uh, encoder um, rail will you know, have a good parallel consistent gap that's pretty reasonable. I, I noticed on mine that you know I never got everything quite perfect but it seems to be pretty tolerant. Uh, you can have a little bit of, of uh, non-parallelism in pretty much every direction you can imagine and it doesn't seem to bother it any so but obviously that's what this little red part is about is just to make certain that you kind of get that gap right as close as you can. I guess the only other complaint I guess I had was one of the DB9 uh, shell connectors. Uh, the the um, pin housing wasn't mounted to the uh, little plastic cover of the plug very well as you can see in this. Uh, I kind of missed on that one. Not a big deal. I just loosened the screws and popped it in there just right and screwed it back down. Didn't have any electrical conductivity problems or anything like that. Everything worked just fine. Okay, and a quick little show here of my simple little CAD drawing of my uh, humble mill drill and the DRO system and the various 3D printed adapters. You notice the 3D print adapters are depicted in kind of this uh, purpley look. The DRO parts are kind of a gray. Uh, you'll notice that the 3D printed parts have uh, copious slots in them and or the DRO parts themselves have slots in them. So you have lots of freedom of motion as far as being able to find a good spacing for the sensor carriage assembly to the little slider encoders and the uh, finding a good uh, position where the gap that is uh, kind of set up with these little removable plastic inserts is, is you know found where everything's nice and parallel and square and true and then you can start to s tighten everything up. The other big advantage to, for my uh, giving you folks this um, total CAD model is say for instance your mill drill isn't really the same as mine you might be able to kind of confirm that by kind of measuring things and see what I have here it's a it's a crude uh, layout but it I think it's sufficient to kind of give you an idea of what I had and what you might need and then you can modify your design especially if you end up with different slides and so forth. I was just figuring it, it would be kind of a nice starting point. I mean, I went through all the trouble of modeling this thing. Might as well just uh, have folks be able to um, do what they want with their version. So anyhow, I'm using A2 Plus assembly module, which is really easy to download and install with, via the uh, um, add-on manager that's built into FreeCAD. The version of FreeCAD I'm using is 0.2, and I think originally I started this project it was in some version of 0.19, and so I, I think that as long as you got a reasonably current FreeCAD model, you won't have any troubles with being able to open up my file. And then if you look over on the side here, you'll have all the different components and how they're constrained and are free to move and so forth, as far as for test movements and so forth. And I figured, you know, why not? Um, share this file. Uh, you might need to do some modifications in case your mill is different or you might come up with a better a solution or something like that. And It's a nice place to start so uh, you know perhaps before you even buy any hardware just open up the file and kind of inspect everything and get a feel for what it's all about and uh, decide on what sort of course of action you might want for your digital readout system and uh, it's, I think, well worth the effort, especially if you just 3D print the parts and uh, the results are so nice. Okay, so I think that's kind of a wrap. Um, kind of showed you what I'm up to with this whole uh, 3D printing DRO stuff. Um, feel free to check out my uh, Thingiverse files and modify them however you need it. 
the RF30 Rong Fu. I don't know if they make something exactly like this. It certainly looks like it, just kind of casually looking at the import um, sites and catalogs and so forth. The DRO system works very nicely. The initial starting up of it was kind of alarming. It didn't power up, and it turns out it was a bad power cord, so one of the legs is open. So uh, luckily I have tons of PC power cords, so I just grabbed another one and it up and ran just fine and had never had any trouble since then. So if your DRO just happens to not start up the first time around, check out the power cord, maybe that's it. Uh, otherwise, works pretty well, seems to be pretty well made. Um, like I say, the, the brackets were kind of the weak point along with no real instructions as to how to install it. Not that there's really much to it and hopefully what I showed you here will help you kind of get a leg up on it if you're thinking about buying these things. You know, it's a, a few hundred dollars. It makes life so much nicer that you don't have to deal with these collars anymore. You know, it, it, for the for the money, it's a really good return as far as uh, being a lot more fun to play with. And there's so many more features here than you could ever hope to do with just the collars and doing it yourself. So there's just all kinds of potential here that I have yet to explore. So I think that's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this project. I certainly enjoyed it. I'm, Thank you for letting me share it with you and uh, tune in for another project um, and thank you for watching.